The gentlewoman from Michigan, Ms. Talib, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Powell, for being with us this afternoon. Um, I wanted to start in talking a little bit about my district. Uh, when we do discuss the state of the economy, I believe our hyper-focus on the stock market always has us forgetting the dire situation for our low-wage workers. Uh, and let's remember that half of the American people do not own a single share of stock. And we continue to hear about how the stock market, market is booming and the economy is bouncing back. But where I come from, Chairman, we are not seeing that recovery. The national unemployment rate in December was 6.7% nationally again. Uh, but in Wayne County, Michigan, the district I represent, it, it was nearly double, 12.4%. So we know that software uh, engineers, our investment bakers, attorneys might be able to do their jobs remotely, but if you are a taxi driver, a restaurant server, a barber, you cannot work from home. So as of last month, our employment uh, in the lowest paying um, job tier was at 20% below pre-pandemic levels. This is why I continue to call for reoccurring monthly payments of 2000. So Chairman Powell, in your opinion, what would sending $2,000 uh, check a two thousand dollar survival uh, survivor check to survival check to uh, every American mean for the health of our economy and what would it mean for our nation's most economically uh, vulnerable? Um, I, I'm very sorry. Uh, I, I I don't want to talk about a provision that's actually in the current bill. I will echo though that yeah we we see the unemployment rate. Your your situation is not uncommon. There are many communities where the unemployment rate is twenty percent now. And higher, so uh, we do get it that big parts of the some parts of the economy have a long way to go. And I think this is why the super majority of Americans actually support monthly two thousand checks that would lift and help millions out of poverty. Our immediate priority, as you all know, should be taking care of our American people struggling to make ends meet. The Federal Reserve's own monetary policy report shows that Black and Brown communities are overwhelmingly left behind during this economic recovery, Chairman. So what is the Federal Reserve doing specifically to address both the racial and social economic disparities that exist in the economic fallout from the COVID pandemic? Can you speak about that? Sure. So the, you know, with our monetary policy tools, they really lift the whole economy. But we, we made fundamental changes in our, in our monetary policy framework last year uh, and, and did so in part because of what we saw happening in low and moderate income minority communities with, in, at times of very low unemployment. So... We've said that we won't tighten monetary policy just because of a very tight labor market. We'd want to see actual inflation or other issues that would potentially derail uh, the recovery. So that, I think, will, in the long run, be something that does benefit um, lower income people, communities of color. So specifically direct payments, is that what I'm hearing? No, really just that we will keep our rate, uh, our, our policy rate low uh, and, and encourage the economy to become very strong before we start tightening policy. And that's that's what we've, uh, the guidance that we've given, by the way. Yeah, I don't know, for my call, for my residents at home, they wanna be able to pay their rent, their water bill, utility. I'm not sure if that's gonna work in black and brown communities, uh, Chairman. But last month, you know, over a hundred leading economists urged Congress to pass a strong stimulus package, as you know, with comprehensive recovery from the pandemic. So I, I think we re need to look at some of these economists who are saying that direct uh, checks to individuals, um, like many other countries have done a number of times, and it's also very much tied into the unemployment rate. There are different kinds of triggers. I think we need you to take a lead in how we can really truly help um, address some of the racial and social economic disparities. Many of these communities, Chairman, were already in survival mode before uh, this pandemic and now are really truly suffering. And Chairman, Chairwoman Waters knows the stories in my district I, I even mentioned one woman who said, you know, please, Rashida, help me find another place to put my child in early childhood education program. I said, don't worry, I'll find you a different place. They can do it virtually. She goes, you don't understand. I need to be able to send her somewhere physically so that she can eat twice a day. So we need to understand the dire need on the ground. And Chairman, I know that you have to look at it more as a bigger picture, but understand your Federal Reserve own report says that you're failing and servicing, again, communities like mine, and we need to do more and be much more aggressive. Thank you so much, and I yield. It's fun to stay at the